Hello, uh, my name is uh, Piotr Kijewski. Uh, that's uh, Piotr is uh, uh, Peter in, in Polish. And I'll be talking about uh, uh, the Zeus banking Trojan and uh, our experiences in Poland with uh, tackling the problem of Zeus. Uh, I'm the manager of the CERT Polska team, which is the national Polish, uh, Polish CERT. And I'm also one of the founding members of the Polish chapter of the HoneyNet project. Uh, so what I'll be talking about here is just to give you a very, well, an extremely brief uh, glimpse of uh, fishing in Poland and why it's not really very popular and uh, how come uh, Zeus has become so popular in our country. And you'll find out that, uh, well, based on our experiences, sort of Poland is sort of like the, the, the testing ground for, uh, for malicious, uh, malicious software targeting, uh, targeting financial institutions. Uh, Spain is, is the other sort of like exception in, in Europe, uh, we think, and Poland is, uh, is, comes a close, uh, close second. And I'll talk to you about uh, our experiences with Zeus in the mobile, Zeus uh, for, uh, for mobile phones, and uh, recent experiences uh, with uh, the peer-to-peer -peer version of Zeus that uh, came about in October 2011. So actually, uh, in Poland, we don't really have much, much fishing as such. Uh, uh, Polish users are not really targeted by phishing. Uh, Polish services are not, uh, are not the targets of phishing. The banks are not being fished. We actually just had basically two cases in 2011 where we had this uh, classic uh, phishing attempt. Uh, there was one bank and one auction platform, and that's it. We do get reports on phishing, and we actually got uh, 250,000 submissions for 2011 about phishing cases related to Poland, but this is just about sites hosting phishing for other countries. So uh, we do get a lot, but hardly any uh, targeting Polish, uh, Polish users. Interestingly enough, in most of the phishing reports that we get, 50% uh, actually are located in the US in the first place. So Poland is just 2% of all the phishing sites uh, uh, that we, uh, in terms of submissions that we actually receive. Uh, so essentially, uh, in order to steal credentials in Poland, you have to employ something more sophisticated than just uh, classic uh, classic phishing. Uh, you have to install malware on uh, on on a user's machine, get him infected, and then just uh, uh, steal his credentials uh, from there. And uh, two botnets that specifically do that and that are very popular. Uh, not just in Poland, but worldwide, and something to be, well, really scared of if you use the internet for, for banking are Zeus and, and SpyEye, because they are very, very efficient at, at cleaning your bank account without you actually uh, noticing. Uh, so the first case I'd like to talk about is Zitmo, Zeus in the mobile. Uh, we became interested in Zeus about uh, two years ago, and, uh, well, during that time, Zeus was just uh, just another botnet that's not not really different from from any other. And in January 2011, uh, uh, we got a report from one of the uh, one of the banks in Poland that we work with uh, closely about uh, a new version of Zeus that was behaving slightly differently than all the other ones. And apparently, well, we looked at the config files and uh, they claimed to be version 3 and that's, that was simply, well, not true, but anybody can put any version there they want. Zeus at that time was a version 2. And what happened is that uh, normally, uh, well, uh, Zeus and SpyEye sort of has something that's, that are called web injects and these are basically definitions of, of, of uh, banking sites slightly modified so that uh, they display the information that the attacker wants and not uh, what the bank is really, uh, bank's website is really displaying to you. And while well, normally we get tons of banks uh, being targeted uh, this way, uh, also many banks in Poland, in this case we just had uh, the, the injects were sort of oriented toward three Polish banks and just the three Polish banks, so they were very targeted towards Polish users. And it turned out that the purpose of this entire uh, scam was to steal mobile transaction authentication numbers. In Poland, uh, most of the banking sector is very, well, it's, it's pretty modern. That's, well, because we, we didn't have a very sophisticated banking sector in the past, so we jumped into uh, 
technology pretty 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 fast, and it basically means that uh, you have uh, SMS-based authentication uh, to or to confirm uh, transactions. So everything is basically two-factor based, and it's based around SMSs, which means that it's pretty difficult to uh, to steal money from uh, from your account. So it turned out that the, the, the attackers came up with an idea of actually taking over uh, the phone in order to take over the, to intercept the, the SMSs and, and clean the bank account. So we had a look at, at these uh, web, uh, web injects and uh, it turned out that uh, something strange happened when a user logged into a bank being targeted. A JavaScript, uh, slightly obfuscated, was being downloaded from, from a site. And uh, this sort of text appeared. This is just for one bank. It's, it's in Polish, but it basically asks you, uh, please pick your phone. Uh, we, we, and they want uh, the, the exact uh, uh, the phone make, phone manufacturer, and phone version. And you actually had a very long list of various phones. There were uh, multiple dozens of, of phones to select from. And you even have a guide what to do if uh, your phone was not on the list. So, you know, after logging in for every, every user, m many users, they thought, well, this is really the bank uh, talking to us because this was after, after, after login. And it looked like a leg legitimate part of, of the site. So, uh, uh, there was a prompt there at the bottom for the phone number, and the user was expected to, to uh, type in his phone number. And uh, install a, a certificate. So this is uh, just maybe over here. This text over here talks about uh, uh, after, after you, after you, after you uh, typed in your phone number, you got an SMS that said you need to install a cert security certificate. And this is the URL, and you have to uh, follow the URL and and, and to, to to get it installed. And users did did follow the URL, and in the end, uh, they they got infected by by the malware. So the command and control for this at, at the phone level is is SMS SMS based. You have a you have a phone number somewhere somewhere outside that that enables. Uh, that is essentially the, the, the command control for this, for this type of attack. And at that time, this was like the second outbreak of, of such, a, such malware. Uh, uh, the first case was uh, in October 2010 in Spain. That was sort of like the alpha test. And the beta test was, uh, was in Poland on a much, much wider scale. And initially, uh, Symbian, uh, Windows Mobile, and BlackBerry were, were targeted. So at that stage, we actually knew very little about analyzing software on, on different mobile phones. So we had to very quickly uh, find all the mobile phones we could, different versions, and actually start to, uh, to, to analyze, analyze the malware. And uh, interestingly enough, the Android version that came about uh, much, much later, I think, a, a, couple, a couple of months. So, uh, well, interestingly enough, uh, well, for, for Symbian, for example, it was, well, we, we, did, we did some reverse engineering, and it turned out that normally you could not uninstall such an application once you installed it, unless you knew the secret code. And uh, we, we found the secret code there, so we were able to advise users in Poland of, of this problem. This was uh, after, after some reverse engineering. Uh, it was also quite easy to, uh, to uh, reverse engineer the Windows uh, mobile version. And based on these, uh, this sort of uh, activity, we were able to identify uh, many uh, phone numbers that were being used for, uh, for command and control. So uh, what, what, uh, what could it do? What could Zitmo uh, do us in terms of, of command and control? Uh, you, could issue, you could issue the phone different commands, such as uh, set, uh, set admin, which basically defined uh, what the command and control phone number was. You could define a sender, that is, you could define a, a number that you wanted to intercept, so that, for example, when your bank s sends you an SMS, it comes from a certain number, and if you define the ad sender here, it'll tell uh, Zitmo to forward all, all, all messages to the command and control 
server, the ones that come from the number defined by the sender. And you could do stuff like block on and off, where you could actually disconnect uh, the phone from the network. Uh, so what happened was that one of the big blogging sites, uh, blog, blog sites related to security in Poland, they blogged about this case about a week or so after we received the malware and it all went public. And uh, I think the media was a bit, a bit bored and they, they really caught on to the story and there was lots of, lots of hype and all of a sudden we started getting information about thousands of users being infected and losing, uh, losing their money. We also had some security companies from outside of Poland telling us there were really very, very many infections. And uh, well, it turned out we, we have a close cooperation with, with the various uh, mobile phone operators and so we were able to ask them actually how many users actually did get to contact uh, these, uh, these phone numbers used for command and control. And it turned out that really only uh, for one mobile operator, and there are, about, there are four main ones in, in Poland, 22 just installed the app. So 22 were actually uh, completely owned uh, in, this, in this process. So based on this, uh, we were able to estimate that there were probably around 100 to 150 users being, being infected uh, uh, in, in, in Poland for this, so not, not really thousands or tens of thousands. So uh, I, I, I ended up on breakfast television from the National Polish uh, Channel, and uh, they, 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 they started asking me how many users were infected, and when I told them probably around 100 or so, they were extremely disappointed and they were asking what the fuss was about. So, so it turns out that it was not quite such a large-scale attack as, as, as expected. So uh, this phone number, interestingly enough, is in uh, Jersey, uh, in the UK. And when we contacted uh, some, some of the UK certs, they told us it was a, a good location for, for lots of uh, this kind of scams in, in the UK. So it's a popular, popular place. And that's an island over here, if, right next to Jersey, to make it even more confusing. So uh, there was a, these were actually the only two bits of the UK, I think, occupied by the Nazis during the war. So. Interesting enough, uh, the SMSs that, uh, that we received were sort of like uh, from the future. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the time, and uh, we see an hour, an hour in the future. And so, uh, so this led us to suspect that uh, actually the group behind this was, was uh, from the Ukraine, which is right next to, uh, on, on our eastern border. Uh, this, uh, some, some Cyrillic sort of like confirmed this in terms of... Uh, and of analyzing one of the malicious processes on the phone. So actually, uh, uh, we were quite quite happy with this case because uh, it, we have a cooperation going in Poland where we act, we we cooperate unofficially with uh, with banks, ISPs, and content service providers. And thanks to this, we were actually able to quickly ask uh, ISPs to give us information about the scale of the infection because. Uh, well, we, we didn't really know how many, how many, how many persons were infected. And uh, when we gave them the phone numbers, they were able to analyze uh, all, their, all, their, uh, all their data for uh, phone numbers that showed uh, similar behavior. And thanks to that, we were able to make a sort of like a realistic uh, estimate of how many infections uh, uh, actually took place. So uh, that's, uh, that's one case. Uh, and that, that, that happened about over a year ago. A uh, more recent one is related to uh, a peer-to-peer -peer version of Zeus, which appeared a couple of months ago. And, uh, well, we, we, we sort of happened to got, get our hands on it. Uh, it also used uh, a domain generation algorithm as backup in, in case uh, the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, failed. Uh, this entire setup wasn't exactly a, a full peer-to-peer -peer version. This full peer-to-peer -peer version apparently has appeared about uh, a month or two ago. Uh, this, this actually just does some of its work through peer-to-peer, through -peer, but the rest is there is still command and control, which is centralized, which is a weakness that was eliminated in the last, uh, last month or so. So uh, this is the timeline of, of, of our activities. We actually heard about this uh, in, in, in September. Uh, first articles appeared in October, and in November we thought, well, maybe we should try to look into this in, in more detail. But we thought that the botnet will be inactive soon, so maybe we shouldn't care too much. 
but uh, we, we, we moved forward and uh, in, in December 2011 we actually started to, to do some more, more analysis and start to write our own crawlers and servers emulating a, a, a botnet node. And uh, well, in January we expected that, uh, that the botnet will be inactive soon, but it turned out that, well, it's still alive uh, to, to, to this day. So uh, the difference here between uh, classic, uh, classic, the classic Zeus before, which was very centralized, is that uh, certain type of information, is, uh, such as configuration files that uh, host the web eject, are really propagated through a peer-to-peer -peer network. And this is uh, UDP-based, and uh, transmission of config files and updates are done via, uh, via TCP. And in case that fails for some reason and the bot is uh, and the host is blocked to communicate on certain UDP and TCP ports, there's a fallback mechanism that allows uh, an infected bot to, to contact uh, uh, a specific domain uh, specified through the DGA algorithm. But uh, still, the drop zone is still centralized and uh, there can be instructions also received from the, the command control that can also act as a drop zone. Uh, we'll just uh, skip through this because ah, maybe not enough time. But uh, so this is basically uh, the, how 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 the communication works. Uh, node information is 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 via UDP. Uh, version information about the uh, configuration files and and the software is also via UDP. And the binary data, the updates are done uh, via uh, TCP. So this was their only. Uh, really on, the only commands issued through the peer-to-peer -peer network, but that has uh, changed since uh, 15th of January where there was a major update that allowed for some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some more elaborate uh, uh, data transfers via UDP. So there were like very high, high UDP ports being used for, uh, for incoming outgoing packets. That was, that was a sign that, uh, that you could be infected uh, with, with, this, uh, with this bot. There really wasn't, uh, there was a very simplified uh, encryption, mostly to, to make it mostly obfuscation really. Uh, the TCP communication also used high level ports and uh, it wasn't encrypted at all. Uh, in order to try to map out the network, we decided to write our own uh, network, network cr crawler. And, and, and send all these uh, version queries, save the results, and uh, ask for neighbors uh, of, of, of the queried node, and then save the results and, on and go on and on to try to map out the network. Uh, after four weeks, we had nearly a million nodes. Uh, it turned out uh, that, uh, well, not all of these, uh, not all of these had valid, uh, valid parameters, so there were possibly some errors here, and also uh, stuff like, uh, network address translation, etc. And uh, we also made, uh, we all, and based on the unique ID assigned to each bot, we estimated about 200,000 uh, infections, uh, in infections worldwide. So these were some properties of, of the network that, that we mapped. So we discovered that uh, uh, most, uh, most of the nodes had like uh, 10, uh, 10 children. Mm -hmm. That was that was uh, that's the characteristic of the of the peer-to-peer -peer network, and uh, we were also able to identify well who the the main uh, the main parents uh, parents uh, parent nodes were the original uh, ones hard coded, and we did a mapping of the entire of well this is actually five percent of the network, that's how the Zeus peer-to-peer -peer specimen looks like. And we also did some additional crawling statistics. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, one day about how many answers we got to queries. You can see that we didn't actually get to very many. So there were multiple, uh, there are tons of, of, of inactive nodes. Obviously, we were not able to query as fast as, as we could. There was just, uh, just one crawler, uh, crawler running. So this may also impact this, uh, this result. And uh, this is how. Uh, version updates actually propagate uh, through, through their network. On the y-axis we have a square root scale and this is over a period of three weeks and the different colors they denote uh, different, uh, different version updates. So you can see that, that uh, 
of well, uh, these uh, these are sort of like the previous uh, previous versions that did not update. So essentially, after a new version comes along, 85% of the network is updated uh, nearly immediately. And this is shown with a with a better graph over over here that says that it takes about one hour for 92% of the nodes to to update. Uh, some words about the DGA uh, domain algorithm. Uh, we, we, we wrote uh, a simple tool to, to actually emulate the DGA algorithm used by, uh, by Zeus, and we, we, if we tried a few, and it turned out that there were actually, well, many others already observing uh, uh, this, this network because we had sinkholes already set up in, in place. So uh, this is the result of, of some of our mapping. You can see that this uh, Zeus actually, uh, this version of Zeus liked uh, Italy quite a lot. So I think the US came a close second. And there are actually a few infections around the, the Bay Area as well, but uh, not so many. The red dots show, uh, we geolocated some of them stuff. Uh, so this is a, uh, a list of tools that we had to, to write to emulate a node, and we actually still have a... Uh, we are not crawling the network currently, but we do have a server that, that responds to queries. And this is sort of like a, a simple peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, honeypot. Uh, just maybe give you a demo. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is sort of like a live transmission from our... Uh, our our Zeus peer-to-peer uh, -peer server that just responds to connections and maps and maps them out where these connections uh, came from. So the botnet after about five months or well nearly six months now is is still alive and despite the fact that I think right now the entire uh, quite a lot of antivirus industry is, is is also looking at at all of this but it's 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 still alive here as 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 you can see. So thank you. That's a quick uh, overview of, of 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 our Zeus monitoring activities.